Spatel Darby Metro Park. Wet prairie trails. One more time. Good morning. Here we are on our way to Patel Darby Metro Park. We're actually at Patel Darby Metro Park, but where we're ultimately headed is a woodland ecosystem. But on the way, there's this nice wetland ecosystem that we'd like for you to stop at. It's an it's a area that was farmland until about 10 years ago, and it was purchased by the Metro Parks, and natural hydrology was restored by breaking the drainage tiles, and is excavated and planted with a few, but not many plants. It's mostly natural wetland. It's what you call a wet prairie. It was done to enhance wildlife diversity and also the water quality in the very nearby Darby Creek, which is a very pristine uh, wild and scenic river, one of the best in Ohio. And so what we're going to do is look at a couple of wetland plants. Um, Callie, can you do the herbaceous plants and Ben, uh, the woody plants? And what do you think, what are, we, what are we going to see in the next few minutes? Sure. The, uh, you notice that in wetlands you see a lot of monocots. So we could look at some of those. I pressed the wrong button when Callie explained the difference between sedges and grasses, so I came back at the, in the rainstorm, hopefully at the end of a rainstorm, to show you sedges and grasses. This is a sedge. It's got some differences in the flowers, which you can't see at this stage because these are just last year's flowers. It's, a, it's called a bulrush, but it's not really a rush. It's in the genus Scirpus. And um, a principal feature about sedges is sedges have edges. They're famous for having triangular stems. This one is more obtusely triangular, uh, but triangular nonetheless, with the leaves in three ranks. The, a feature about the leaves is the leaves of graminoids, like grasses and sedges and rushes, have a blade, and the part that wraps around the stem is called a sheath. And the sheath in sedges is closed. It's, um, uh, you'd have to sort of rip tissue if you were to remove this leaf from this stem because it's, um, it's, it's fused all around. That's not like the way it is with grasses where it's an open leaf sheath where the uh, parts of the leaf sheath just overlap each other. Kind of like two kinds of shirts, a pullover shirt and a button-up shirt. This would be the pullover shirt. And that is, um, the, that is how to tell sedges vegetatively. This video was supposed to be done by Ben, but I pressed the wrong button when he showed us Willow, so I came back in the middle of a threatening rainstorm to show you Willow. This is Willow. This is one of the woody plants of wetlands, and it's uh, distinguished by having long, narrow leaves, and uh, the trees are dioecious. They're male and female individuals. This one's a female because those are the fruits of the willow. Willow is famous for um, the genus is Salix, and if you know that aspirin is acetylsalicylic acid, that salic in the middle of that name 
which is derived from willow because it contains the active ingredient of aspirin. It's been famous since time immemorial among all peoples as a cure for pain to chew on the, the twigs or the bark. Willow. It's closely related to cottonwood. This wetlandish tree in the rain is eastern cottonwood. It's called Populus deltoides. Deltoid means triangular, and the leaves are indeed triangular. And the leaf stalks, they're no notably flattened. I call them linguini leaf stalks. And this is a tree that's in the in the willow family, Salicaceae. And like willows, it has um, separate sexes. There are male cottonwoods and eastern co uh, and and female cottonwoods. And it's a fast-growing tree of wet sites. Eastern cottonwood, Populus deltoides. Oh, it's in the genus Populus. Question, why do aspens and cottonwoods grow in, in uh, uh, places like um, India, China, and Indonesia? Oh, because those are very populous places. One of the important aspects of learning about the flora of Ohio is learning about uh, some of the plants that are kind of a threat. <laughs> Social distancing. Uh, some of the plants that are a threat to the uh, ecological integrity of our, of, our, of our botanical communities. And so basically invasive plants. Um, weeds that are like ecological weeds. And there's a number of them that are really serious, of serious concern. And we're going to learn about them and discover them on our um, botanical surveys and our other field trips in the next couple weeks. Um, here's one. Kelly, could you um, tell us about this invasive plant? Sure. It's okay that I'm uprooting it right now, even though maybe that's not such great practice some of the time, because it's invasive. So this is called garlic mustard, Aliaria pediolata. And it's a really common invasive plant that you'll find in uh, just areas that are disturbed or even also forest understories around central Ohio. And so its name garlic mustard gives you away, or gives away the fact that it's part of the mustard family, the Brunswickaceae, which is one of the eight families that we're going to be focusing on in this class. And if you smell it, it does smell kind of bitter, like a mustard and also garlicky. And you can actually eat this plant as you can with, I believe all members of the Brassicaceae. It might not taste great, but you can eat it. None of them are, none of them are gonna kill you poisonous. Some of them might be a little bit uh, very acrid, like a uh, horseradish, but too intense. Okay. But this one you can eat. When it's younger, it tastes better. And sometimes people will make uh, like a pesto out of it, replace the basil. Great. And so we can see some features of the Brassicaceae with it as well. Since we just focused on fruits, we might wanna notice that it does have those saliques. So you've got the flowers at the tips here, but these were the old flowers that have already been fertilized and matured into fruits. And so this, this is gonna have seeds running down both sides and, uh, and gonna spread all over and be invasive. Hooray, boo, <laughs> great. Which reminds me, uh, did you once go to an uh, invasive organism's dinner? I did, yeah. What was that about? Oh, I, so I'm part of a club called Society for Ecological Restoration. And so we do just all kinds of different things that, that have to do with nature that we're interested in. One of the things we did was collaborated with the Crest Gast Gastro Pub and did an invasive species dinner. So we had um, some things like carp and non-plant things that were making up a lot of the meals. But one of the vegetarian items we had that I appreciated was a, a pesto made of garlic mustard. Hmm. Yum, yum. Cool, thanks for telling us about that. Yeah. Okay, let's off, off, to, off to the woods. <laughs>